Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into NB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Here's what's making news tonight. The Deputy Prime Minister responds to former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram. If he's moving off the scene, right, he should leave these commentary for those who are still on the scene. We've got more from Ingram's resignation press conference yesterday. The Police Staff Association defends its commissioner. Plus, the Olympics just a week away. We'll tell you what the Bahamian athletes are up to. I'm Nikia DeVoe and NB12 starts right now. NB12. The Progressive Liberal Party has taken exception to some of the comments former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram made yesterday, particularly those aimed towards Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade and those regarding the referendum on gambling. Paige McCartney has more on the party's condemning response in this report. <laughs> The Progressive Liberal Party called former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram in a statement bitter and angry because of his comments yesterday. And today, Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis said that the former Prime Minister should stay out of politics if he's leaving politics for good. The PLP defended its position on a number of the national issues heavily criticized by Ingram yesterday regarding the renegotiation of the sale of the majority stake in BTC to cable and wireless. The PLP said it will fulfill the government's promise to regain the majority stake and that the prime minister has already secured three well-known Bahamian personalities to represent the government. Of Ingram yesterday challenged uh, the, the government's seriousness about moving forward with renegotiations and called it fluff. Deputy Prime Minister Davis said he's not impressed with how the former national leader is conducting himself now that he's no longer in office. Well, I, I think he is bitter. He's, he, he's always been a person unable to accept rejection, defeat, or criticism. And, uh, and this is his reaction to it. He's just revealing he is what he is. And he's revealing what he is, an ungracious, uncouth, um, person, um, you know, I'm the last to to, to, to ask today um, what I might think about him. I recuse myself from passing judgment on him because uh, I don't know that I could be um, in any way uh, impartial. Davis said if Ingram is leaving the scene, then he should leave commentary on national issues to those who remain on the scene. Quite frankly, I, I found it rather offensive. That the that Hubert Ingram, right, who is leaving the public scene, as he says, which I wouldn't believe until I see it and know it, uh, would be so ungraciously commenting at a time like this. Ingram suggested at his press conference yesterday that the government hasn't been abiding by property regulations by giving the owners proper notice when it demolished a few homes in inner city communities under the urban renewal program. Davis said the government hears the cries of those affected, but that in each instance the homes were beyond repair, uninhabitable and totally abandoned by the owners. These are not buildings that could, could be restored to any semblance of habitation again. Right. So it is useless to anyone but for venues for crime. When you weigh that, I, weigh, I come down on the side of removing uh, the temptation for, uh, temptation for criminals to hide and or use these venues. Uh, to aid their criminal activities. On the topic of legalized gambling, yesterday Ingram insinuated that the PLP made a deal with numbers house bosses prior to the general election and that is the leading motive behind holding a referendum so soon. The PLP called those claims ludicrous in its statement. The deputy prime minister also denied those allegations. He struck a deal with the web, he struck a deal with the web page bosses, right, and reneged on a deal he made with them. Right. 
we didn't strike any deal with any way of state budget. What we have done is that we understand the hypocrisy that exists in our society, where on the one hand we say we want to be law-abiding, and on the other hand more than, eight, close to six, more than 60 percent of our people are engaged in activity that they themselves don't feel that they're doing anything wrong about, right? And we're trying to normalize that. Davis added that he does not believe the government will change its mind at this time regarding not putting forward the question of whether Bahamians can vote in casinos. He said that doesn't mean that it can't be considered at a later point. Reporting for MB12, I'm Paige McCartney. Well, Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade has been in the news quite a bit in the past few days and from his reluctance to release current crime stats to several members of the Free National Movement criticizing some of his recent comments, the Police Staff Association feels the commissioner should know that its members have his back. Juan McCartney reports. Executives of the Police Staff Association saying that the Commissioner of Police has a thankless job and one that is very challenging given what the country is facing with crime. They say that all members of the public should be behind the Commissioner. PSA Chairman Darrell Weir today told NB12 that since Greenslade came to office in January 2010, he's worked tirelessly to protect the Bahamian people and modernize the force while facing an incredible surge in just about every category of serious crime. He said that he personally knows that the commissioner dedicates himself morning through night every day to protecting Bahamians, and officers wish to express their commitment to him as the sometimes harsh headlines keep coming. What we are saying in the Police Staff Association, basically, we are showing the, the, the citizen of this country, we, we wholeheartedly stand behind our commissioner. We feel our commissioner is doing a splendid job uh, leading men and, and women of this organization, and we are urging the, the, the general public there to support the police, support the commissioner of police as he, he carried, carried his duties, you know what I mean? Because we, we really feel he's doing a splendid job, and we stand behind him 100%. The men and ladies on the, on the, on the ground, they've been doing a good job, you know, we're out there toiling every day, because as, as, as we see in the past, crime has been taking a toll on this country, and I think of late, we're starting to get a grip on it. It's a long, it's a long way from really having a con to control of crime, but bit by bit, step by step, I think the police force, we will get it. Greenslade has also come under fire from politicians, with former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram and former National Security Minister Tommy Turnquest expressing concern about the nearly 40 percent rise in police shootings in the second quarter of this year compared to the first. Where said police face unimaginable danger on a daily basis and have to be allowed to protect themselves and others. Society have changed, you know what I mean? We, we have, once we, we, are, we are encountering a lot of criminals out there who are carrying uh, high, high powered weapons and stuff, as you will see the commissioner having to display sometimes back the amount of firearms we've recovered off the street. So, police, we carry our firearms, and most of the time we encounter by these, these poisons with firearms. Sometimes we have to use our firearm, and there's policy in place would be of the head to when we use our firearm. And I think in, in most instances, and in all instances, the police force, are, the officers are justified. I mean, until proven otherwise, and, and they should shooting up the fire. Ingram also recently blasted the commissioner for his stance on Urban Renewal 2.0, indicating that Greenslade was previously not in support of it. Greenslade declined to respond to Ingram yesterday, citing the nature of the relationship between his office and that of the prime minister. The PSA today also declined to get involved. We are not getting the political aspect of What's happening out there, that's not our mandate, that's not what we're about. We are about to represent the welfare of our members. Now, what the politicians them say, pertaining to crime and all that stuff, else, we, we're not going to go down that road. However, former Attorney General Alfred Sears condemned Ingram's comments. I thought it was unfortunate um, and a bit reckless because uh, what the, the Prime Minister, who would have appointed the Commissioner, and up until the general election, from every public indication had confidence uh, in the commissioner uh, to dis seek to discredit uh, the commissioner. I think the only effect of that is to undermine public confidence in the commissioner at a time when our national security is threatened in every uh, sense. 
Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram has slammed the government for ending Princess Margaret Hospital Administrator Coralie Adderley's contract for what he called personal reasons. The North Abaco Member of Parliament criticized Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez yesterday during a news conference held shortly after he handed in his resignation letter to House Speaker Dr. Kendall Major. He says it's just one of several clear cases of victimization since the PLP won the May 7th general election over two months ago. Bonnie Toot reports. For a party that won the May 7th general election based on its message of believing in Bahamians, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram says the Progressive Liberal Party government has done a poor job of showing it. During his first news conference since the election, Mr. Ingram accused the government of victimizing civil servants and said its recent decision to end the contract of Princess Margaret Hospital Administrator Coralie Adderley was made because Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez has a personal issue with her. What has happened at the hospital with um, Coralie, Coralie um, Adley Macmillan or Macmillan Adley um, is a clear case of victimization. You know, the, um, Gomez has an issue with Coralie. He has a personal issue with her. In fact, um, I'd like to report that on two occasions, while I was Prime Minister between 2007 and now, Gomez had occasion to call me to complain about what he said was happening to him that he thought was unfair and or wrong. And I, on both occasions, um, caused the matter to be resolved in his favor. The PHA decided to release Adderley from her contract months after it was renewed and 18 months before it ends. Dr. Gomez told NB12 on Monday that he was never impressed with Adderley's performance during the 10 years she served as hospital administrator, adding that PMH is crying out for new leadership. However, Mr. Ingram dismissed those claims, insisting that Adderley worked alongside former health ministers Dr. Bernard Nottage, Dr. Marcus Bethel, and Dr. Hubert Venice with no problems. She served the FNM. She served the PLP from 2002-2007, Dr. Marcus Battle, and Dr. Um, Bernard Nottage, Minister of Health. They had no difficulties. She served Dr. Minnis, no difficulty. How is it that Gomez come in six weeks' time, he has a difficulty? It is personal. It is wrong. I condemn it in the strongest possible terms. She's a very good and capable officer. She's managed the place well. In fact, the employees at the place have not yet been told by the PHA that she's going to go. Everything that has been said about it was in the newspaper. They had to read the Nassau Guardian. No respect whatsoever. Total dis. In the two months since the PLP won the election, there have been numerous claims of victimization. Dozens of urban renewal workers claimed they were let go in June because they were believed to be FNM supporters. However, the government said those workers' contracts had come to an end. In May, the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas terminated talk show host Christina Chrissy Love Thompson's contract months before it was set to end. When asked if he thought the Christie administration was victimizing public servants, Mr. Ingram said, Unquestionably so. The Ingram administration faced similar claims of victimization back in 2007 after talk show hosts Steve McKinney and Philippa Russell were fired from the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Mr. Ingram says this is why the two were given the boot. Steve McKinney and those were on the radio telling people the election was not over, the PLB was coming back, and we were not going to have the private, the public broadcasting station abused in that fashion. It's being abused now. I heard Keishley Smith on the, on, the, on the TV the other night. Talk, talk, talking about how, how um, I have um, um, been missing in action and how I have um, disdained the parliament and the rest of it. Most unbecoming. It's been turned into a propaganda cessation. I now listen to channel, watch Channel 12 news and I ask the public of the Bahamas to start watching them too. <laughs> Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie Tude.